Rotation dynamics of a rigid body with vector calculus and geometric algebra. I was told that geometric algebra is the more natural way to describe physics, so I wonder whether that was true also for rotational dynamics of a rigid body. Since I haven't found a concrete derivation on YouTube yet, I decided to do it on my own. In the first part of this video, we will first review intermediate dynamics. We will go through the derivation of time derivative in a rotative moving frame. And then we will use the results from the derivation to further derive the relations between angular momentum, rotational inertia, and torque. In the second part, we will go through the same topics as in the first, but with geometric algebra. And finally, in the last part of the video, I will summarize and compare the two results. So first, we will recap some of the results from intermediate dynamics using a more common vector calculus. Suppose that we have a set of rotating orthonormal bases, B, and another set of fixed bases, E. In intermediate dynamics, we are told that they are related by a rotational tensor, R, like this. The rotation tensor R is symmetric, and its bases are also normal to each other. This means that the transpose of R is also the inverse of R. Now, if we take the time derivative of the rotating basis B, we should get this expression, dB dt equals to R dot E. Since we can also write the basis E as the inverse of R multiplied by B, we can also write the time derivative as dB dt equals to r dot r transpose b. We will call this r dot r transpose tensor the angular velocity tensor omega. Now recall, since r is both symmetric and also normal, we had r r transpose equals the identity matrix. If we take the time derivative of this equation, we will get this r dot r transpose plus r r dot transpose equals to zero. Now the first term is just the transpose of the second term. What this means is that the angular velocity tensor omega is anti-symmetric. So we can actually represent the tensor omega with the product between the three-dimensional Levi-Civita tensor and another vector, which we will call it angular velocity vector small omega. To show that this formulation of omega above really yields an anti-symmetric tensor, recall that the Levi-Civita tensor has the following property, epsilon ijk equals to minus epsilon jik. So if we swap the indices of omega, we get a minus sign. Now, since we can express the derivative of a basis vector b as bi dot equals to omega ij bj, we can also express it in terms of the three-dimensional Levi-Civita tensor and small omega, bi dot equals to minus epsilon ijk bj omega k, which equals to epsilon ijk omega j bk. And this is just the outer product between small omega and b. So in the compact form, we can write db dt equals to omega cross b. Now, suppose we express a vector v with the rotating basis vector b. So v equals to vi bi. Taking the time derivative of it, we will get dv dt equals to vi dot bi plus vi bi dot. For the second term in the derivative of v, we know that db dt equals to omega cross b. So we can also write the time derivative of v as dv dt equals to vi dot bi plus vi omega cross bi. We can place vi just before of bi so that the equation becomes dv dt equals to vi bi plus omega cross vi bi. So the first term is the time derivative of the vector v with respect to the moving frame which we will ex express as delta over delta t in this video. And the second term is just small omega cross v.
Now that we are able to express the time derivative of a vector in the moving frame, we can discuss the rotation dynamics of a rigid body with it. Consider a rotating rigid body. The angular momentum vector h of this body with respect to its center mass is h equals to the integral r cross r dot, where the vector r is the position vector with respect to the center of mass. Because this is a rigid body, the positions of parts of the body are fixed, and the time derivative of r with respect to the rotating frame will be zero. So the time derivative of r will only contain small omega cross r. Therefore, h can be written as h equals to the integral r cross omega cross r. Let's dig into what this cross product actually is. Using the Levi-Civita tensors, we can write the cross product as epsilon ijk epsilon mnl rj omega n rl delta mk. Now the product of two Levi-Civita tensors is equal to the following. So the cross product epsilon ijk epsilon mnl rj omega n rl delta mk will only have two non-zero terms. Which leads to omega i rj rj minus ri rj omega j. Or in compact form, it is r dot r minus r tensor r omega. Therefore, if we define the rotational inertia tensor as i equals to the integral of r cross r identity minus r tensor r, then we will get a nice equation for the angular momentum vector h h equals to i omega. Now, let us consider a torque exerted onto a rigid body with respect to the center of mass of the body. That would be t equals to integral r cross a. Here, the vector a is the acceleration of parts of the rigid body with respect to the center of mass. Now, then the vector for the acceleration is just the time derivative of vector v which can also be written as d dt integral r cross omega cross r. Since the first term of this derivative dr dt cross small omega cross r is zero. So with vector calculus, we have the following rotation dynamics for a rigid body. Because the position vector r does not change on the rotating frame, the rotational inertia tensor remains constant. So the equation can be simplified to t equals to dh dt equals to i small omega dot plus small omega cross h. Let us now derive the same results from the previous part of the video using geometric algebra. In geometric algebra, the rotating basis b and the fixed basis E has the following relation B equals to R minus theta over 2 E R theta over 2, where R theta is a geometric object called the rotor. Taking the time derivative of the equation, we will have dB dt equals to R minus theta over 2 dot E R theta over 2 plus R minus theta over 2 E R theta over 2 dot. Now since we can also write E as E equals to R theta over 2 B R minus theta over 2. Replacing the E in the time derivative of B, we can also express B dot as dB dt equals to R minus theta over 2 dot R theta over 2 B plus B R minus theta over 2 R theta over 2 dot. This results from the property r minus theta over 2 r theta over 2 equals to 1. If we take the time derivative of this equation, we get r minus theta over 2 dot r theta over 2 plus r minus theta over 2 r theta over 2 dot equals to 0. So the time derivative of b can be written as dB dt equals to b r minus theta over 2 r theta over 2 dot minus r minus theta over 2 r theta over 2 dot b. 
Now, the anti-symmetric part of the geometric product between a vector and a bivector is the left contraction between the vector and the bivector. So we can write the b dt equals to b left contract 2 r minus theta over 2 r theta over 2 dot. If we define the angular velocity by vector omega theta as omega theta equals to 2 r minus theta over 2 r theta over 2 dot, we will arrive at the ninth equation dB dt equals to B left contract omega theta. In geometric algebra, the angular momentum of a rigid body with respect to its center of mass is a bi vector. H equals to integral r wedge r dot. Since parts of the rigid body are only rotating with respect to the center of mass, we can write the angular momentum as h equals to integral r wedge r left contract omega theta. Now since r left contract omega theta must be perpendicular to r, we can also write the equation as and we can tidy the formula up a little so that h equals to one half integral r dot r omega theta minus r omega theta r. Now if we decompose the vector r into a part which is parallel to omega theta, r parallel, and a part which is perpendicular to the omega theta, r perpendicular, then we can write h equals to integral r r parallel omega theta. So if we define the rotational inertia motive vector as i equals to integral, r parallel dot r parallel minus r parallel wedge r perpendicular. We can express the angular momentum by vector as h equals to i omega theta. However, unlike the rotational inertia tensor we derive with vector calculus, the rotational inertia multi-vector we derive is a function of omega theta. Therefore, it will not be as useful as the rotational inertia tensor. Nevertheless, we can still find a relative simple equation for the rotational dynamics of a rigid body with geometric algebra. In geometric algebra, torque is written as T equals to integral R wedge A. As in the vector calculus case, it is very easy to show that T equals to dH dt. So what is the time derivative of H? Let us recall what H is. It is h equals to one half integral r dot r omega theta minus r omega theta r. Since the position of parts of the rigid body is fixed on the moving frame, r is constant. So the time derivative r dot r omega theta is just r dot r omega theta dot. Meanwhile, for the second term, we use the product rule to get r dot omega theta r plus r omega theta dot r plus r omega theta r dot, which can be expressed as this very long equation. We can cancel some of the terms out from the equation to get. We can also add and subtract r dot r omega theta omega theta inside the brackets to get. So the time derivative of h is this long equation, which we can td into dh dt equals to delta h delta t plus one half h omega theta minus omega theta h, where delta h delta t is just integral r r left contract omega theta dot. Also. The second part of the equation is the anti-symmetric component of the geometric product between h and omega theta, which must be a bivector. So we can actually write the equation as dh dt equals to delta h delta t plus grade 2 component of h omega theta.
When comparing the derivation of rotating dynamics of a rigid body with vector calculus and with geometric algebra, there are three main points I found. Number one, both ways result in very neat equations. In vector calculus, we have dh dt equals to delta h delta t plus omega cross h. While in geometric algebra, we have dh dt equals to delta h delta t plus the grade 2 component of h omega theta. Number 2. Using rotational inertia in vector calculus makes more sense. In vector calculus, we can derive a rotational inertia tensor which is independent of the angular velocity vector. This is not the case in geometric algebra. The rotational inertia motive vector is a function of the angular velocity by vector. So it is more straightforward to carry out the calculations in vector calculus. Although in both ways, it all breaks down to a system of linear ordinary differential equations for the delta delta t term. Number three, geometric algebra can describe rotation in higher dimensions. The real advantage of expressing the rotation dynamics in geometric algebra is that it can be readily applied to rotations in dimensions higher than 3. Since unlike the cross product, products used in geometric algebra can also be used in higher dimensions. Of course, this extension has almost no practical use in the fields of engineering, but it might be useful in theoretical physics and mathematics.